Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about the cyclotron. The cyclotron is a device relatively small in nature. It packs a punch. It's able to take small particles like alpha particles and accelerate into very high velocities and therefore very high kinetic energies. How does it do that? Well, it sets up a very strong kinetic field, causing the particles to move around the cyclotron at very high velocities and eventually get ejected with a certain amount of kinetic energy. And the question here is, if we are taking alpha particles, move, moving them around in a radius of 0.5 meters with a, a magnetic field at 1.8 teslas and a charge, of course, of two protons, which is 3.8 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, what will be the velocity and the kinetic energy of those particles as they become ejected out of that cyclotron? Well, the principle here is, again, that they'll be moving around in circles in a magnetic field, which means that the centripetal forces must be equal to the forces caused by the magnetic field. So we can say that uh, mv squared over r is equal to qvb, which is the force caused by a magnetic field on a moving charge. We know the mass of the particles. We know the radius. We know B, the magnetic field and the charge, we simply don't know velocity, so we'll go ahead and take that equation and solve for velocity. First, we'll simplify the equation like this. We can say that velocity is equal to Q times B times R divided by the mass of the particles. So in this case, the velocity is equal to the charge 3.8 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, magnetic field of 1.8 teslas, the radius of 0.5 meters, and the mass of an alpha particle at 6.65 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, which is roughly the mass of four protons. All right, let's find out what the velocity is. 3.8 e to the 19 minus times 1.8 times 0.5 divided by 6.65 e to the 27 minus. And it turns out that it's a velocity of 5.14, 5.14 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. That's quite amazing. That's quite fast because the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8. So let's find out what the, what the percentage of the speed of light that is. So if we divide that by 3 e to the 8, we get 17.14%. So this is equal to... 17.14% of the speed of light, which is quite fast. And now you might think, does that have some relativistic effects here? Well, we'll see in just a moment. Let's find the kinetic energy of a particle like that. We know that the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. So that's equal to 1 half times the mass. And let's assume first that there's no relativistic effects. And at 17% of the speed of light, it's probably only about 1% or so. It's probably not a lot. So the mass rest mass would be 6.65 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms and then we multiply times velocity squared which is 5.14 times 10 to the 7 meters per second we have to square that all right now square that amount times 6.65 e to the 27 minus and divide by 2 equals and so we have a kinetic energy equal to 8.794 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. Okay, how many MeVs is that? Well, to convert that to uh, electron volts, we multiply times the ratio of one electron volt per 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So if we divide this by 1.6 times 9, 19 volts, 1.6 e to the 19 minus equals, and we get, ooh, that may not have come out quite right. Let me try that again. Oh, maybe it is, maybe it is. Let's see, let's convert it. And, okay, that looks like about, roughly speaking, 55, MEVs, 55 million electron volts, which is quite an amount, it's quite a big, big amount, not nearly the amount necessary to get into relativistic speeds, which we can see was only 17%, but yet that's quite a bit of, um, of energy in that particular alpha particle. Again, so what we did here, we simply took the velocity squared, the velocity we got from there squared, times the mass, divided by two, 
and that's kinetic energy in joules converting that in conversion back to electron volts you can see that's quite a bit of energy and that's how we use cyclotrons it allows particles to move up to very very high velocities in a very small area by applying a very strong magnetic field having a go around the circle at very high speeds and then ejected from that to achieve these enormous kinetic energies and that's how we do that